I'm Judy Shaw for NYC Floor Talk. Joining me today is Jay Williams. Jay is an entrepreneur, investor, and host and personality for ESPN. Jay, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, Jay, have to ask you about the last dance with Michael Jordan. Everyone's watching it, um, this documentary. Now, you have a special connection to this. Tell me about that and tell me your take on the documentary. Well, Jason Hare, who is the executive producer, did an incredible job with it, first and foremost. I was lucky enough to be drafted second overall by the Bulls back in 2002. Uh, it still haunts me that there was a 7'6 guy named Yao Ming that went before me, but I won't hold any animosity towards him. I'm fine. <laughs> Number two, I'm okay. And uh, got a chance to play for the Bulls for one short season before I had my accident, but uh, spent a lot of time with guys like Jerry Krause, spent time playing in the triangle offense. And also uh, was pretty audacious and took Michael Jordan's locker, which didn't kind of, uh, I guess, go over well with the media. But I felt like somebody needed to take it. So I wanted his greatness to rub off on me. <laughs> Good choice there. Um, OK, so let's talk about the impact that COVID-19 has had on sports. I mean, it's been huge. Um, what's your perspective on this impact? And also tell me how you think it's going to change the future of sports. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously there are billions of dollars uh, of revenue that are being lost here between the TV networks and between the leagues. I, I think what you're seeing right now on the collegiate level, uh, you, you have a lot of colleges and universities that are struggling with the fact that a lot of the way they generate revenue is based off ticket sales. So if, if school is not in session, you can't necessarily ask the student athlete to come back and participate and drive revenue for that school. So I, I think what we're realistically going to see is a diminishing of D1 sports. You're going to see things in jeopardy such as Title IX because the bigger sports in football and basketball subsidize other sports for the school. So uh, it, that's going to be a challenge for colleges as it relates to the leagues. Uh, I'm not sure that we are going to have an NBA season or an NFL season. We may not see fans in stadiums until 2021. And as much as the NBA is trying to come back and play, uh, the scalability that you would need, Judy, with testing would be astronomical. And then in relation to that, you have to think about what kind of public relations uh, strategy would that be if there is lack of testing in our society for everyday citizens who are passing away from this COVID-19, but yet privatizing industries get access to all these different tests. I, that's something that Adam Silver has to heavily weigh. But I, I will say this, there, there. I haven't met a commissioner as progressive as Adam Silver, and as it relates to leaders within leagues, I, I really think he is extremely pragmatic. So I do think he ultimately will make the right decision. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned NBA. You talk about that. Now, um, NBA did recently announce that they were going to start to reopen their team facilities in areas where the shelter in place has been lifted. So now mm -hmm. you'll see players that will go back and it'll be I guess they'll be practicing individually, but you won't be seeing the team practicing together. So, I mean, how how will that work? I mean, do you think that makes sense? Yeah, well, I think very much like each state is being governed by its governor and, and those type of decisions. I, I think you've seen teams and in individual states do the same. The Atlanta Hawks, just because they were allowed to practice, they still decided to rescind that option and not practice right away. I think teams are being very prudent and judicious with how they go back to market and get their players. I, I, I think that was a, a pragmatic step in the right direction for the NBA, but uh, I still think there's a lot of work to be done. I think that was more so done, Judy, for the sake of how do we how do we mitigate risk to the best possible degree? How do we not allow our players to go out to random gyms, 24-hour fitnesses, things of that sort, in order to work out where they could subject themselves to COVID-19? So if we can create a closed environment, contained environment that is conducive to them staying healthy and working out individually, then that is getting us back in the direction of which we want to go. So you know what, that also plays into mental health. Right. I mean, right now, with all of us sheltering at home, I mean, it's really testing our mental health. But I imagine that for athletes, it's really impacting their mental health. What, what are your thoughts there? It is. I've actually really been digging in and, and been working with Tanya, who is the CEO of the Chopra Center 
uh, with Deepak Chopra because we're, we're trying to do a, a live Instagram with Deepak and myself on ESPN's channels and take questions from athletes and fans just about where we are currently in this pandemic and look from somebody who suffered from depression going through my accident and a lot of, has done a lot of self-awareness. Uh, this isolation uh, in conjunction with the unemployment number that I think hit 26 million, which is incredible with the passing away of family members, with the visuals of people who are visiting. You know, uh, my mother is a recipient of two kidney transplants. My daughter is 19 months old. My mother hasn't been able to see my daughter. We haven't been able to see my mother. Uh, where that can send an individual, I, I think this is imperative that we talk about this more than ever because, you know, we're going to have to navigate the world in a different way, Judy, moving forward. And who knows if we get another lapse of this coming back in the fall or winter. So we need to be malleable with how we adjust. And uh, we need to start to find ways psychologically to cope with what the new norm is going to be. Right, right. Um, okay, and finally, you have some exciting news on the business front. You have an alliance with a digital agency barbarian. Tell me about that partnership. Yeah, so Stephen Moy and I have known each other through my wife for a while. My wife works at a company called Yex that handles a lot of SEO work and they've been working with uh, Barberry. And I, I think Stephen is an incredible leader. And I, we're really trying to revolutionize you know, how the digital agency model is being handled. And I think my partnership with them also working with a lot of brands before I started doing TV, I consulted with a lot of different brands. And also I think this really helps us with my own brand as it relates to ESPN. We're, we're at a pivoting point within our company. Obviously you can see that with the stock price of Netflix and you know some of the challenges that I think we're gonna have as a company. But I, I think I can no longer look at myself and I would be doing a disservice to my company and the Walt Disney Company if I just looked at myself, Judy, as talent. Uh, I have to be innovative. I have to think outside the box. I have to think about how do I bring revenue to the table for my company, working with brands, but then also kind of redigitizing, being innovative with how we bring that experience to light. So I think Stephen and I working together on that aspect is going to be a game changer and uh, it's really exciting. Sounds very exciting and congratulations on that. And Jay, thank you so much for joining me on NYSC Floor Talk. Thank you so much.